Thank you. Oh, good morning again. We are, this is good. Uh, I mean, sense the Lord today. We sense the Lord in our, in our midst. That's, that's that makes a difference in our coming together. God has promised to meet with us, right? His word says when we come together in his name, two or three. And uh, it's, all, it's all he said, two or three, in my name. So we can expect God to be in our midst. And I love to see people worshiping the Lord, and I just love that. I, I think God loves it more than I could ever imagine. He seized into your heart today. He knows maybe when you're troubled and when you're, you know, when you're facing things and when your things are mounting up and you're stacking up and your uh, anxiety levels up and... Uh, no, nobody has anxiety level here, uh, right? Yeah, right. Because we live in a fallen world, right? There will be trouble. We don't have to look for it. We don't have to, uh, you know. We don't want to plan for it, but we just know that trouble happens. Well, guess what? God doesn't abandon you because trouble comes. Amen. How many know that? God doesn't run the other way when you're facing a crisis, facing some kind of hard thing, a mountain of it, whatever it may be. Um, we're going to talk, I want to title this message today, To Walk With God. And that sounds really, really, really simple. But just walk with God. Just, just walk with Him, Right? But how many know some things interfere with, sometimes we get distracted with walking with God. Oh yeah, I remember. Okay, God, you're there. Yeah, okay. I, mean, I forgot I should have prayed before I set out this morning. But remember this. God is always a prayer away. God is just a prayer, a whisper, just to say his name. Right? is prayer. And just to encourage people to start your day with thanking the Lord for who he is, right? Just at the beginning of the day, thank God you're on the throne. Just begin to uh, uh, crown him. Just begin to uh, honor him. How many are doing that already? You do that, it's a good practice. What happens, it, it lines yourself. You see, my, my old man nature still wants to get up and be in control, right? Paul talked about this struggle that was going on between the flesh and the spirit, right? Your flesh likes to be flesh, right? But the spirit of God in us Helps us to maintain our, get our flesh in, under control. We don't, I said in my prayer, we don't have to sin. Right? We don't have to bow down to the flesh or the enemy. So my title is to walk with God. I believe this was God's intention at the very beginning of creation. Back to the matter, if you read the, the Old Testament in the beginning in the garden when God made man and woman and, you know, things were doing pretty well they, before they messed up and things were going pretty well, it was God's practice to come down in the evening and walk in the garden with Adam and Eve and talk and walk and fellowship because God has created us for this very purpose. He wants you to fellowship. He wants you to be his son or daughter. He wants you, he wants to share with you truth. He wants to empower you to live a life that is above the enemy and uh, away from what the world says, you got to have this, you got to have that. Oh, if you're going to really be happy, or oh, if you're really going to be successful, well, you got to have one of these. You know, I don't want to mention anything. <laughs> I got a kick out of one of the guys was talking about, uh, was it Vernon? A green, a green, 
what did you say, it was a green, uh, a green, well, he was referring to a, a, a parking spot was, was for green automobiles, like Teslas. Parking for green. Well, then he, and then all of a sudden this green truck pulls in there. Is that, is that, that the way it went? We got all kinds of gadgets. We got all kinds of electronic. We got all. We got it all. The problem with it can happen. I'm not saying it will, but the problem is that stuff, 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 stuff gets in the way with our walk. It can. We have to guard it, right? Your most important uh, responsibility is to guard your heart, right? Because there's yeah, roots of bitterness, maybe we got to sever them. We got a weed pop, we got a bad thought popping up, and we got to cut it out before it gets out of hand. Right? So, why did God choose us? And I say us, I go all the way back. Why did He choose to create man and woman if He knew all the problems? I think I want to ask him that, but I probably won't even remember it when I get to heaven. Maybe I'll just know. I don't know. But it goes past our thinking, our imagination. But one of those fellows was the man named Noah. You remember Noah? You know what he did? You, you remember the story. God asked him to build this large boat, which took a, probably a hundred years some of you guys have visited somewhere, is it in Tennessee or whatever, this replica of the Noah's Ark. How many have been there? A good, wow, you guys, what, what's the matter with me? <laughs> Maybe we'll have to put that on the bucket list. Um, it really brings it to life. It really brings it, how in the world could he, how God asked one man, well, he had his son. But that's a lot of work. And that's a long time to labor. But why did he choose God? Well, God was something was in the heart of God prior to creating human race. Something was in the heart of God already. God already had a plan. No, the, the, the ark wasn't plan B. Right? It was planned. It was in the plan. And he chooses Noah. And I read one verse that describes Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his time. Noah walked with God. Noah wasn't goody goody, brownie brownie points with God. Noah knew God. And then because Noah walked with God, walk, walking with God helps get us to a place where we receive his clothing, his righteousness. This is, this is, this is pre, pre-Christ, okay? Uh, I want you to catch this. Noah is asked to build the ark which becomes the salvation for his family. And everybody else said, ah, oh, you're stupid. Ah, you're just, what do you think you're doing? Who do you think you are? It's rain? What's rain? It says Noah preached, right? He lived it. He wanted his family to be in. See, God wants to save people of their sin for all eternity. God wants to save us from being separated from God for all eternity. The first thing that as we read in Genesis is the ark. The other, flip it into the New Testament, the ark is merely a symbol of the cross, which would come later, which served as our payment to get into the kingdom, into heaven. And so, Noah was a righteous man. 
but he messed up. Wasn't perfect. How do you know that, Pastor? Well, you get to the end of the story. He was so excited, he drank so much, and he got drunk. He said he started farming. Now all of us say, oh, <gasps> like, okay. Well, here's Noah got in the flesh. Noah messed up. God still used Noah. I believe Noah repented of it. I believe personally, it doesn't say, but I believe personally Noah messed up. Yeah, I'd had a little talk with him. Yeah. And the things come back where they ought to be. Oftentimes in our life, we're walking along and we're doing fine, and all of a sudden, boom, we trip and we fall. We trip over something. Something makes us really angry. And we slip. We say a word. Whoop. Or we think a thought. Or we, we get out of, out of the spirit, so to speak, into the flesh. All of us battle with that. The main thing is this. When you fall, the psalmist said, you, <laughs> he says, blessed is the man who's not hurled headlong, because when he falls, right, when he falls, the Lord has his hand. And guess what? When you fall, the Lord is there. Hey, come on back. Let's, let's, let's learn from this. Let's, let's not get off track. Let's keep focused. So our, our main thing today is to, let's talk a little bit about how to walk with God, how to have a relationship and I mentioned uh, previous a little bit about God had already understood prior to making man. How do we know this? Just some more scripture. So the first point is to walk in his will and to have knowledge of his will. In Ephesians 1, verse 4 and 5, reads as this, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Uh, just, just think on that. Just as he chose us, in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should uh, be holy, blameless before him. In love, he predestined us to adoption uh, as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will. So all of us say, what in the world is predestination? Well, in the church... I don't want to get all tangled up with it. But there's been confusion. Some are on the one side. Well, God knows everything. Everyone's going to get He knows all. On one side of the camp, you, you don't even have a choice. God knows he's going to, you're going to get saved, and that's it. You don't have a choice. And then on the other side, there's, there's this other camp that says, well, you got your will in the way. you got your will. There's a will involved. Well, let's not get all tangled. I kind of tend to believe that the will is play, played out in the, in the part of we have a choice to either receive him or not. I believe that. But this verse that we just read, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, God already had in his heart. He knew that man would sin, yet he chooses to make man. And Jesus understands he's going to come down to this earth and give himself up. Why? Because he wants us to know him. He goes beyond. He goes over the top. He goes through barriers. Uh, he goes through uh, circumstance. He works in your life right now, even today, even this last week. Maybe he has spoken to you. Maybe you heard him. Maybe you're not sure you heard him. Maybe you sometimes think you hear him. I believe I'm coming to learn more and more, that I believe that God is speaking to many, many people all the time. And he's wanting to get their attention because he wants them to walk with him. You don't have to walk alone. I know some of you guys like to go out and take a walk, right? It's just something about a walk. But envision this. God walking right there with you. And as you're walking, sometimes you're talking, sometimes you're listening. I don't know, for, for me, 
I, 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 I kind of get a conversation going quite often when I'm driving. I don't know what it is. I don't know if I'm bored, but I'm just kind of, a, yeah, I'm watching the road. Yeah, might pour a little coffee in between. You know, it, 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 let's not make it hard. Why not take a walk with God? Why not walk where he walked? Where would Jesus go? What, how would he behave? How would he demonstrate in the earth today, where would he go? I almost guarantee he would go where there's needs. And he would show up where there's pain. And he would go into places where people are hanging out. And he would engage in conversation. He wouldn't come out and say, well, I'm God, you know, here, look at me. He would just engage. And they said, they would say, who was that? Jesus, when he was on the earth, would engage in groups, in large groups, but then he would slip away into the wilderness to be alone, to be with his father, because he needed the time with his father. And what's, what will drain us in this life is where we, we are not getting our time with the father. And if people are... Wonderful as they are, wonderful as everybody is, wonderful. We need people. We need time with God. And then we come back with having something to share. What is God's will? When I said walk in his will, first of all, it is God's will that everyone will be saved. That's God's intention. That's God's, that's his heartbeat. That everyone would come to believe in him. Uh, 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slow about his promise. And why you think, oh, when is the Lord coming back? How much longer is it going to take, Lord? But many, many, many yet need the gospel witness. He's not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. When you pray the prayer for your family, for your loved ones, for yourself, for, for your community, you are praying in the will of God. It's his heartbeat. And well, how, do we, how should we pray? I, I sometimes encourage people to pray, Lord, open people's eyes spiritually. Have an awakening. Have a, a real touch from God. May they be drawn to truth. May they not be deceived as the enemy is so good at convincing people of lies. One that, you know who the chief liar is, right? The Bible says it, Satan. Satan is the chief liar. His problem is this. He wanted to be above God. He wanted to, in heaven, he wanted to be God. That was a problem. Satan, be gone. Be gone. Right? A third of the angels went with him. Right? Now we are, we are facing opposition. You ever had a time where you felt the whole world seemed to be coming on you? Like, I mean depression, I mean like, ooh, something not right, right? Sometimes when you're in ministry or you're going to a, a, a place to uh, try to be encouraged, but you're trying to do something good and bam, this is going on, bang, this is what's going on here, whoa, chaos. I thought God, when we served God, everything was going to be hunky-dory, good going, and just roll along here, no problem. No. It's... Guess what? It's a battle. But here's the deal. If you keep looking to God, he's got you right there. He is your shield. He is your righteousness. And whenever Satan comes to say, look at you, you such a think you're such a good Christian, goody, goody, goody. Oh, well, you look at this and you know, it's just, I mean, it's like a, you just want to get a punch him in the face. 
You need to put the shield of faith, which is right, what biblical. The shield of faith is not by my goodness. It's not by my righteousness. All my right, all my goody goody things, all my good deeds are the filthy rags. If I don't have Jesus in my heart, right? It doesn't. It, it's not going to work. And I, I just, I'm still learning to recognize God's voice. This practice takes huge, well, it's kind of trial and error. And so to speak, I'll give you an example. When I, when I, when I thought about coming to this community, we were in another place for nine years, pastoring a, a church. We were completely happy there, completely, uh, things were going pretty well, and, you know, and I, this was, you know, minding my own business, so to speak, and I'm just driving along right out here when I live 40 some miles that way doing a job over here. You're going to be here someday. That's what I heard. That not, loud, not out loud, but in my mind, you are going to be here someday. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Okay. I, I was start. oh, oh, was that God? Is that you, God? I didn't, even have an, I didn't even have to ask him, is that you, God? I knew him. I knew him in my spirit. In fact, I got so excited. And back in those days, yeah, I had a pay phone up here. I, I don't think I had, maybe I had a bag phone. I don't know. Anyway, I got to call my wife. I, you remember that? And I said, you know, I think God just spoke to me that, that we're going to be in Cross Lake, something to that, to that effect. Well, a couple of years later, here we come. It took a process, a while, to, and I started getting, you know, I, I sort of, so to speak, threw out a fleece. You know, the Bible talks about a story, yeah, yeah the fleece guy with the Gideon. I don't remember. Anyway, we do it on one side, morning, a couple, three times, it's flipped. He wanted to make sure, well, God, if you're really with me, you know, make this happen. My prayer was like this, Lord, I'm going to start stepping out. If this is not your will, throw the brakes on me. Put up roadblocks. Put up, you know, flashing lights. Do something, obviously. Well, every time I stepped out, it went positive. Every time I stepped out, it felt right. Here's the big word. Every time we are in God's will, we will have peace. You, would you catch that with me? God's will is not confusion. Now, I mean, the world can be going crazy around you. In fact, you can, I said it earlier, you will have opposition. But inside your spirit man, in your heart, you know you are doing what God wants you to do. What a way to live. The peace that God has. And this whole, when God shows up, he takes care of us in here. Things can be dropped that you hung on to for years. And God, in a moment, can lift it from you. That burden, that anxiety, that depression, that opposition... Because God's will for us is to walk with him and know him. He chose us. It blows me away. He chose us. He has plans for you. The second point is we're called. As, did I read the text? I, didn't think, I don't think I even read, read the text yet. I'm sorry. Colossians chapter 1. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I will skip now to just Colossians 1, uh, verse uh, 9. For this reason also, this is Paul praying in his letter. For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. Oh my goodness, it's like, Paul, do you expect me to be like God right now, or what? 
let's not get hung up on the perfect, the perfectionist. God is only perfect. He chooses the imperfect so that he can be perfect in you. Right? He chooses us as imperfect to make himself be the righteousness in us, through us, so that not, we're not now relying on ourselves. Here's the problem. If I try to just do good things, good things, because this is what I'm supposed to do, good thing, good thing, good thing, but I fail to walk with God. I fail to talk with God, and I fail to listen to him, then I'm basically doing it on my own. Right? So we, could, we get to do good things. We ought to do good things. In fact, the Bible says we are created for good things, good works. But we're not going to be saved by that. Our salvation is only through the blood of Jesus. So I want to get this I want to get this right. Because I walk with God, I'm getting to know his heart. And because I'm walking with God, and God is walking with me, and he's, he's telling me how I ought to behave. He's actually not only telling me, but he's living in me. He's, he's helping me with my weaknesses. How do we, how do we, be, how do we get to that place where we can walk in a manner worthy of his calling. And that's another scripture. Friends, this is the deal. I know, and I really, I heard this in, 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 from a professor in, in my Bible college years. He was seasoned pastor. He spoke to the young people about how to be a pastor and how not to do dumb things. and You know, and he would say this quite often. Your people that you're going to talk to have been beat up all week, right? You need to have a message that's going to encourage them. The last thing they need is someone standing up there telling them they're not good enough. They're never, you know, this is not right. That's not right. Here's the message. We aren't good enough. God says, therefore, I will come. And because of my righteousness, you are good enough. You are made worthy because of the sacrifice. And just trust him. Believe on him. Now, a lot of Christian folks, I believe, are still struggling with this feeling. I'm not good enough. Right? Come on. You ever feel like you're not good? You're not worthy. I remember Kelvin, and he's passed on with glory. Here's what he, I'm just going to share this. Forgive me, Kelvin. Um, he says, I'm not worth two cents. Well, he was, what he was saying is, I can't do nothing. I'm in the nursing. This is even pre-nursing. I'm not worth two cents. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't debate with him. I just, you know, I, I, I just uh, Sometimes you've got to let people vent, and, and, and they're going through a stretch in life that's hard. It, it, getting to the end of your life is not for, well, somebody said sissies, right? Right? It, it aches and pains, there's weakness, there's setbacks, there's one, this one, and then another, and then, right? You are valuable because if you're still here, and you know Jesus, you have a voice. If you can't talk very loud, that's okay. If you can't even talk anymore when you get tired, that's okay. You can talk to Jesus. And you can talk not only about things in your own life, but you talk about your grandkids. You talk to Jesus about your loved ones. You talk to Jesus about your neighbors. All of a sudden, you are having ministry right where you're at.
I, uh, I, think it's, I think it's supposed to work this way. Because I walk with God and he walks with me, then I begin to take on his characteristics. All of a sudden, I start feeling compassion on people that I wouldn't feel compassion for otherwise because, oh, God is, God is in me. Okay, God, what are we going to do about this? How are we going to fix it? How are we going to, are we supposed to bless? Are we going to give to this? Are we going to, are we going to, are we going to show up to this? You know, what is God's will? Listen, don't complicate, overcomplicate God's will. God's will is this, that you love him with all your heart. Number one, just love God. Now, the rest of it will take you the rest of your life to figure it out, right? Don't get hung up on it. Young men especially, they're starting out. Uh, young ladies, too, of all, we're, we've all been there. We start out, well, there's the question. What are you going to do after you get out of school? Right? What are you going to do? Like, like we're supposed to have it all figured out? Oh. Well, I might have, so I think I'm going to go work. You know, I'm going to do this. Here's the way it worked with my life. A door opened. Right? A door opened, an opportunity to work, right? And after that, I felt, oh, okay, I was just minding my own business, spending time with God. One evening, or one morning, I don't remember. And uh, Carrie and I had started getting to know each other, and she was kind of like bringing me up another level in my spiritual life, so to speak. She encouraged me. You ever thought about Bible college? And I went, uh. I went, oh, inside. Like, um, I didn't want to answer that question because I was afraid of it. Right? You know that God is patient with us, but He's when He has some plan for you, He wants you to, to get to that place. Um, I had to make a decision. I'm going to pull a Jonah, or uh, I'm going to run from God, and I did probably for a while. I wrestled with God. Okay, God, okay, man, this is, you get, you, you, you've got to be kidding. You know, it's like, you, you ever talk to God like, man, Aaron, you know, kissing Aaron, old Moses, you know, he, he argued. Come on, God, I can't even talk. Moses is saying, I, you know, I, I can't get the words out. My brother Aaron, oh, he's very good at it. God says, I'm, I'm choosing you, Moses. And we, we sometimes, the will of God is, is there, there's a daily will, like you go to work, right? If you go to work, you do the routine. You take care of the, the, the necessity. How many know that there's a lot of things that, is this the will of God? I have to do this over and over and over and over? Is that the will of God? Yeah. It's part of life. It's just doing the basics. Now, if opportunity arises where you, oh, man, I wish I could have the time to just do something fun for God. Just go somewhere. And maybe, and maybe it's just your neighbor across the street to help, help some kind of need. Maybe there's a project you can get involved with. All these little specifics begin to kind of you start seeing them because you've been walking with God. Right? And all of a sudden, life becomes an adventure. Oh, in other words, God can switch things up. He can, think, he can bring refreshing. He can bring things that are uh, never planned on. I never dreamed that he'd have such place. I never dreamed we'd have so many blessings because we're, our heart is on the Lord and because our heart is on the Lord, we recognize even the littlest things that are God things. Gary had a rock story. You want to hear a rock story? What was your theme for the year? 
Ken Spire, we're, we're down. I'm just sitting in the car. She's in the shopping place. And, you know, I'm just being the good husband that keeps the car cool or hot or whatever it was. <laughs> you can tell I don't like shopping. <laughs> and she comes out and she takes a strop off the ground. And guess what the word was on it? Is spire. Can you maybe think, maybe some would say, that's really coincidence? Coincidence. I think God is saying, I got you. Right? Don't miss the little things. The simple breezes, gentle breezes that Elijah Right? When he was hiding, wanting to die from de depression and anxiety, God spoke to him and told him to get up and go to work. Sometimes that's what God may say to you and I at times. Okay, I know it's hard, I know it's tough, but just trust. I'll help you through it. We're walking together. He doesn't send you out the door by yourself. He doesn't send you, he didn't leave the 12 disciples to be orphans, right? He said, I will send the helper, the Holy Spirit will be with you. Uh huh. And he is. And so, this whole lesson Paul is sitting in a jail probably in chains, writing a letter to a group of people in Colossians that he heard about, that had come into the faith. And it stirred him, the Holy Spirit stirred him to pen these words, not only for Colossians in the original, but for you and I to read today. Because all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching correction and reproof that the man of God may be equipped for every good work. There is a work to be done. And it's sometimes so mundane yet important. Lastly, Everyone goes, whew, get my last point. Continue. Once you start walking with God, continue walking. That's what Paul says in verse 23. If you continue, if indeed you continue in the faith, established and steadfast, not moved away from the hope, of the gospel that you have heard, which was proclaimed in all creation. Look, look, look at that verse. Which was proclaimed in all creation. God created the earth, all that we know, and places man in it. At the same time, understanding that there would be a fall and sin would enter. You see, God, he came back to the garden after Adam sinned, right? And he, right? Remember the story? And he calls out to them. What, you, you know what was happening, right? They were afraid. Their eyes were open to their nakedness. They were afraid to go how to walk with God. God didn't give up on them. He asked them this question. Have you guys ate from the tree? Right? That I told you not to eat? God already knew. What, he, what was he doing? He was trying to get Adam and Eve to confess. Oh. It's so hard, isn't it? To admit. Right? Human nature is like, ah. You know, it's just 
first, and he did. They made me do it, right? That's human nature. But God comes down and and guess what happens? Animals had to die, which is another type, pre-shadow, of the New Testament of Christ. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. These, these animals die, therefore they're, God says he clothed them. He clothed them. And I wanted to bring this down, and we can wrap our thinking around it. When you walk with God, you have fellowship, and I'm going to, I'm going to take my liberty. Comes to mind a verse from 1 John. This has really helped me. You, you've, you've been out when it's hot and dusty, maybe in a field, maybe you're running your machinery. However, have you ever been so dusty and sweaty and you, your eyes were like, whoa, right? Look at this verse. It's from 1 John, 1 John 1, 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and don't practice the truth. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. That's the whole, that's it right there again, walking with God. And look at this. The blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we're open and honest with God, he lifts that sin. He said, well, I know you sinned, but he convicts us. Hey, okay, let's talk about this. Can you talk to me about this? All it takes is just a change of heart. Change of, well, yeah, I admit, I, I, I blew it there. Let's not stay down. Let's not stay condemned. Let's not walk in defeat. Let's not walk around like we're, we're no good. <laughs> I mean, we, we start to beat ourselves up, right? This is just the human nature in us. But God says, you're valuable. I have provision for you. The cross, the cross has paid it all. And not only for our sins, but for our physical bodies to be healed. Isn't that awesome? Physical healing can take place. Because Jesus is offering relational things, issues, emotions that are wrecked inside because of broken relationships. Can, there can be a day of healing. It doesn't mean that you, you know, get over it in, uh, overnight, one night. A lot of these things take time, but going back again and again, keep walking with God, you are on the right track. And so it's Paul's thing, now that you've started, keep going, keep going, keep living by faith, keep the faith, continue on. You know what helps us to continue on? You know what God's ways that he has <laughs> provided for us to keep on is that brothers and sisters in Christ encouraging one another. That's part of the reason we do church. The Bible says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. All the more as you see the final day approaching, encouraging one another on. What a beautiful thing to have a family to call your own. So keep walking wherever you've started. If you haven't started yet, start today. Encourage you. Start just say, Jesus, I understand. I, I can't save myself. I can't be good enough. I can't. I can't work hard enough. I mess it up every time. Jesus, I need you. Simple prayer. Come into my heart. Pray that prayer. And maybe even in your quietness at home or even now, you can pray that prayer in, 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 your, in your walking down the road. You can pray that prayer. And so, Lord, we, we want to hear what you're saying. We want to be in a place where it's easy for you to get our attention. That as soon as you begin to talk, that we're right there to listen. Lord, help us to grow in the areas of our faith. Help us to realize that we are not going to be perfect. We are not going to always get it right. 
but we're going to keep coming back to you until that day you call us home. Thank you for what you've done on the cross. Thank you for what you've done for our families, what you're doing for the future generations to come. We pray for this community and people that are in yet need of salvation. We pray that it will come through a witness, through one word of encouragement by the help of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. I wanted to sing this song that would be a benediction song. I just come to grow to really love it. Uh, it's, it's called The Blessing, and it's really about a... I'm going to switch mics. Um, it's really about the scripture that says, the Lord bless you and keep you. I don't know about you, but I, I love that because I want the Lord to shine upon. I want his favor upon what, what, what you're doing, you know. How great it would be to, uh, to realize that, hey, God helped us. We didn't foresee something coming, yet God was there. Thank God for many times he's protected us. I want God's favor. Let's, let's, uh, I just invite you to, to try singing this with me, and uh, if you've never heard this before, and uh, hey, there you go. Maybe we got the mic. Sorry about that. The Lord bless you and keep you. Let's sing it, please.